One of the problems that's been stewing around in my mind for quite some time that recently has been brought to the fore by events in my personal life related to a deceased friend, as well as a private conversation I had with a reactionary expat not too long ago, is the issue and problem of cognitive dissonance. More specifically, the danger of cognitive dissonance. Now, by cognitive dissonance, I specifically mean the psychological conflict, the internal conflict, that arises when two opposing worldviews clash with each other, and there is effectively, as a consequence, not a peaceful resolution of these two worldviews where one worldview uh, receives favor over the other due to a preponderance of evidence or the weightiness of the arguments put forth for that view, but rather uh, an overwhelming shock to the mind, the brain, the system, as it were. And there's a real danger that this kind of cognitive dissonance uh, presents. Because oftentimes you see people, the cognitively dissonant, shifting from one polarity, one extreme of the pole, say far, far left, all the way to the right. But that, of course, is probably not the best contemporaneous example that I can think of. In fact, the best example that I can recall, uh, having thought of this for quite some time, uh, goes back to the early mid-2000s, when there was this atheism craze. You might remember that, many of the, <clears throat> the elder among you. And those of you who decided to do a bit of historical research into recent history, neither here nor there. As many of you know, there was a kind of anti-theism, atheism craze, and a lot of people were jumping on the bandwagon. Um, you could argue that the modern incarnation of the SJW movement probably took its roots uh, back in this sort of atheism, um, anti-theism uh, crusade of the time. And though some people would mischaracterize me as a staunch anti-theist, I'm at best a mild anti-theist, although recent events might have shifted me slightly more <laughs> to the, uh, the middle ground there. But I've never been particularly um, crusader-like or enthusiastic about my atheism. <clears throat> For me, atheism, pardon me that I'm suffering from allergies at the moment as the uh, spring is in full uh, throttle and uh, it is throttling me, um, <clears throat> pardon me, Ath my atheism has never been uh, a militaristic, crusader-like uh, system of beliefs. I mean, I, I grew up believing in no deities or gods. All the gods uh, available seem to be, particularly the monotheistic religions, of, of equally little importance whether it's the uh, angry storm god of the Jews, the Greco-Jewish creation found in the figure of Jesus or whatever variant thereof you'll find in Islam, as well as many other deities around the world. I mean, Quetzalcoatl <clears throat> doesn't sound too convincing to me. So my atheism was never something I have worn on my sleeve, though it seemed rather obvious to me that the claims predictions and observations made by religionists have almost never withstood the test of time or the test of evidence. With that said, not everyone uh, fits that description. There are people who come to their atheism uh, through a variety of means, um, and there are some that come there vis-a-vis uh, -vis evidence. Um, but even in that case, if you've received an, an, a very doctrinal education and religion, it, that might leave scars. But one particular phenomenon that one can observe from these earlier days uh, in the 21st century of the atheism movement was a lot of angry people, a lot of angry people emerging from a theistic background, a religious upbringing, believing one thing for most of their, their lives, and filled with a kind of fury, almost, uh, at the world and at um, the God that they believe had, had wronged them. Now, to be fair, I'm thinking of a, of a friend right now, um, oftentimes religious indoctrination can, I legitimately believe, be a form of child abuse, uh, tormenting children with images of hellfire, and children by their nature are gullible and credulous, believing that can leave lasting scars, marks, and psychological damage on that person. 
So the anger isn't necessarily misplaced. However, in many cases, it's not the weight of the evidence against the, you know, take your pick of the religion that motivates these people. In many cases, it was Christianity. But rather, this anger at, at the pain and the, really, a, a system of beliefs inflicted on them that, that they now know to be false. And so they just pivot in the other direction. And these types of atheists had been some of the most militaristic, crusader-like, and and zealous of, 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 of any people I, I knew. I mean, just obsessed with religion to a degree I couldn't comprehend. I mean, essentially, I would describe myself as well as my father and, and mother and, and the vast, vast majority of my friends as just sort of irreligious. Not particularly obsessed with religion one way or another, but uh, not convinced by it by any means. This wasn't the case in many uh, of these former theist gone, gone atheist. And so you saw a complete uh, 360, a movement from one pole to the other. That is the most prominent example I can think of and a good example of cognitive dissonance. Now, how dangerous this was ultimately, uh, I think you could make a case for the fact, as I pointed out, that modern SJWism is kind of a, a creation of this in some ways. SJWism in feminism, however you want to term it, SJWism is a better term here, He's not born of evidence, but uh, rather emotions and, and feels. And so the core reason for one being an atheist, i.e. lack of evidence for uh, theistic or even deistic claims, uh, isn't present. And that opens up the floodgates to uh, powerful emotions, often oftentimes negative emotions, that can have lasting consequences on, on the individual's uh, expressing those emotions as well as the people that they come into contact with. You also see this in the political realm. Uh, one so neoconservative pundit, American pundit, uh, David Horowitz. This guy used to be far, far left, I think back in the 60s, 70s. and the 80s, he took a, once again, a, just a, a total turn and shift to the far right, specifically neoconservatism, you know, the, the kind of Jewish path. Uh, a lot of uh, Jews tend to uh, advocate or a lot some uh, and there's a reason why I'm talking about these polarity shifts and the simple th reason for my discussion is that I have a real concern for what will happen when the weight of the evidence presented against SJW arguments traditional liberal arguments about race gender science the idea that there are no uh, distinctions between people, that everyone is the same, effectively, that there are only cultural differences, that all political si systems, well, that their political system is the best possible, uh, all claims uh, to the contrary, notwithstanding, uh, the evidence uh, will be presented, but you know, nothing will change. My concern is that these people will, who are in charge, and this is what I think the main thrust of my argument is they are in charge now of social policy, of academic policy. They have a lot of media presence. And these people will erupt in a fit of cognitive dissonance towards the extremities of whatever other position they find convincing. And I think you already see this in many uh, areas of, say, YouTube. I think many on the alt-right used to be former leftists or people on the left that have been driven to an absolutely extreme interpretation of certain alt-right views that uh, probably isn't actionable for one, but also two, uh, just doesn't really map onto reality particularly well. So this is a real danger because when the so-called intelligentsia experiences cognitive distance, and eventually they will, at some point in time, the weight of evidence is just so heavy that one has to yield to certain facts. Um, I know up until a few years ago, even, maybe four or five years ago, I was aware of genetic differences between populations. I hadn't studied it particularly extensively. Um, but as I delved into it more and more, it became clearly apparent, apparent that the evidence is there and that oftentimes it can have, at least at the group level, the mean level, uh, profound consequences uh, on outcomes. 
social outcomes, economic outcomes, behavioral outcomes, etc. So ignoring that, you know, it didn't result in my case in cognitive dissonance. I try to take things as they come. But, um, and I also have to recognize it as a fairly important factor in, if you will, crafting societies. Probably, uh, uh, hierarchically speaking, people disagree with that. I don't think it's as important as gender differences uh, or sex differences, but it is an important thing. But it's, my world didn't come crashing down because I, I never really <clears throat> was, I was never obsessed with the idea that everyone was the same. Uh, it, <laughs> this has been self evident to me in my entire life. And, attempting basketball with uh, African-Americans <laughs> and being much, much worse at it than they were. Slower, shorter, less athletic. Um, trying to uh, compete with East Asians in, 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 in mathematical areas. I mean, it was just obvious that you know, some people were just better at certain things than others. So my point is, is that there's a real and present danger that the intelligentsia, the people who are in charge, who are giving us this narrative will shift in a very radical uh, direction the opposite way. And where is the evidence for it? Well, the evidence for this specific phenomenon, the shifting is, is I mean, as I said, it, it's, it's nascent. You can see it uh, primarily, I think, amongst alt-right uh, people, most in comment sections, although that might be uh, too, too speculative and anecdotal for most people. Um, but um, by their deeds, you shall know them. As, uh, as the mythical figure of Jesus once allegedly said, these tremendously violent groups emerging, Antifa, anti-fascist groups, that these people have the will and oftentimes uh, the desire to commit violence, <clears throat> harm people. My understanding is that recently in Paris, uh, one of the police officers had to deal with these people who had been lit on fire, died, and succumbed to his wounds ultimately. I'm not sure about that, but I heard that. So they're willing to employ violence. They're willing to do really unsavory things. Um, and just imagine what happens if it's the opposite. You know, uh, you're not going to get a sort of reasoned, reasonable person like Jared Taylor. You're going to get someone who's frothing at the mouth and, frankly speaking, is a fanatic um, if it goes in that direction or perhaps some other. Um, I mean, I'd argue that neoconservatism, I mean, it's, it's really kind of a mutation of of certain leftist idea ideas, and it's it's a permutation of that, perhaps. But then you, know, you might get more of that, and even that's harmful. I mean, neoconservatism is what led to a lot of the problems, recent problems in the Middle East, and the immigration issues in Europe, and so on and so forth. Or, for that matter, the disposal of Gaddafi, and I mean, the list goes on and on. So there is clearly, to my mind, based on the evidence we we can observe in the past fifteen plus years, a good reason to believe that we should be afraid of the danger of cognitive dissonance that could easily come into play if, um, if something like this happens, when, when the weight of the evidence, and it is, it is mounting, the evidence for the, well, let's be honest, the badness, as it were, of certain immigration policies, social policies, um, the evidence for the lack of success of the welfare system, I mean, I guess you could charitably say you could just let it run 100 years and nothing will change, and maybe maybe that's what they want to do. But there, there's a lot of evidence against that. Um, the evidence that uh, affirmative action is a good thing, that it helps people out. Um, the evidence that by helping uh, certain racial groups with um, below national standard IQs would be uh, beneficial. Uh, rather than just letting the best of that group just move to the to the front, all these things clearly it's not working very well. It hasn't worked for decades, but but uh, it's eventually some people who are in charge are going to have some sort of brainstorm after they get hit by a lightning bolt of cognitive dissonance, and uh, I think that there's a real potential danger there, if only because we know that some of these people on the left are capable of violence and, and capable of doing some tremendously destructive things. Um, there are not enough mild, calm voices out there, really on other, either side of the, of the spectrum, right, left. Um, 
And yeah, it's a legitimate concern I have. I, I think in the next decade or two, we're going to see a lot of episodes of the cognitively dissonant uh, falling into a rage of sorts as they rail against uh, their former self or their former self-professed beliefs. So something to be on the lookout for. I, I think I will be accurate in my prediction. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's what's going to happen. And it can be very destructive, very destructive. I've seen it happen um, on a personal level uh, to friends, but also you know to, to pundits and public figures. And, uh, well, SJWs, I mean, it's effectively a, a consequence of that, of cognitive dissonance, of something moving in the wrong direction because the reasons for moving in that direction were not the correct ones. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. And uh, I hate to remind you, but the bell icon, if you've not yet clicked it, that would be appreciated. People keep on sending me messages saying, no, I haven't seen your videos in three months. What happened? Uh, because the bell icon wasn't clicked or whatever. So anyway, click the bell icon. If you like the video, like it. If not, then dislike it. All good to me. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And uh, assuming I'm alive, uh, more forthcoming. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.